good afternoon. Did you realize there are varieties of anal retentive behavior? In our world, anal retentive behavior is all too prevalent. The term anal retentive is, of course, an insult. When you say someone is anal retentive, you're saying the person isn't any fun, the person gets all worked up over stupid shit, the person is inflexible and extremely rigid. Oftentimes the person has to have everything be an exact way, and that drives everyone else mad. Think of the stereotypical nerd. Nerds are anal retentive. They're not particularly vicious, but they're still anal retentive. They're socially inept, and they are full of anxiety. When you're full of anxiety, that can lead to anal retentive behavior. You're constantly worried about everything. It's often a form of neurosis. Even though nerds are great in academics, they'll worry about everything being just perfect. If they happen to get 95% instead of 100%, they get all worked up. You can't have much fun in life when you're that perfectionistic. Unfortunately, this can affect other people. If other people have to be around the nerds, they experience the anal retentive attitudes. Nerds worry about their pocket protector being in the right place. They have all sorts of hang-ups. Sometimes it's a chicken and egg thing. They're not very good at social things, so they worry about it, and because they worry so much, that causes them social problems. It keeps going around and around. If they would loosen up some, they would have a better experience. They always have to worry about their homework, homework, homework. It is possible to get good grades and to do well in school, to have a good job without being anal retentive. Some of the biggest anal retentive people out there are Christian fundamentalists. I grew up in a fundamentalist home, so I know firsthand how crazy fundamentalists can be. Fundamentalists will tell you that everyone is going to hell. They have a very rigid view of the world. There is their way. There is every other way. Every other way is wrong. So fundamentalists are constantly saying this, that, this, that is of the devil. That's one phrase I have heard over. Of the devil. Sometimes, even other faiths that barely differ at all from their doctrines are of the devil. For example, fundamentalists are strongly against the Catholic Church. It's of the devil because it's not exactly like them. Fundamentalists rarely have fun. They have a million rules that they follow. Puritanism came out of fundamentalism. It is an extreme form. They don't allow themselves much sexual pleasure. They don't allow themselves much pleasure at all. Some even take it as far as not listening to secular music because it's of the devil. I don't believe 
if you deviate from one single way, you're going to spend eternity in hell. According to these fundamentalists, everyone but them is going to hell. Because every faith that deviates from their one true way is of the devil. When you're constantly seeing everything as bad, 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 that makes you utterly inattentive. I don't believe that 90% of the world is going to hell. Certainly I believe there's a lot of decadence and evil in the world. But I don't think the fundamentalist Christians are doing it right. I also believe in discipline. They are very prudish when it comes to sexuality. I even believe that sexual intercourse should be saved for marriage. But I don't believe you have to get all uptight over rock music with sexual lyrics. To me, it's just the act of sexual intercourse. It's amazing how some of these people function given how rigid they are. I had this drilled in my head over and over. Even when you don't embrace Christian fundamentalism itself, it still alters the way you think. You learn things such as you can't change. That's a stupid rule. Wayne Dyer says we should not follow somebody else's rule. And that's one rule I learned to follow. You don't want to change. So I felt guilty about changing, even though it was very natural for me to constantly grow and change. The reason fundamentalists are against changing is because it shows uncertainty. Uncertainty. They have this death grip on certainty. Their biggest insecurity is uncertainty. They would have to admit they were wrong. They would have to admit there's not one true way. Feminists can be utterly anal retentive. I hung out with these people in college a lot. Now fundamentalism is a lot worse than in a kind of feminism, but feminism can still be bad if done in the wrong way. Feminism in and of itself is a good thing, but some feminists do it all wrong. Like fundamentalists, they get worked up over every little thing. With fundamentalists, it's everything is of the devil. With any way kind of feminists, it's everything is objectifying women, everything is sexist. Some even go as far as saying it's all heterosexual sex is rape. This is nonsense. Fortunately, not too many people believe that. Critics say what that does is vilifies the experiences of people who actually are raped. Because consensual heterosexual sex is one thing. It is the exact opposite of rape. But even when the feminists don't take it that far, they still go way too far, much of the time. If you dare say mankind, you'll offend them, because that is gender-exclusive language. Although they do have a point, is it something to get bent out of shape over? I have a friend who is a feminist, but she is definitely not in retentive. She has a lot of fun with life. She knows what's important and what is not. 
she even supports prostitution. Some feminists will get really uptight about it. A lot will. So it's good that she has a proper perspective. She doesn't think it's innately bad. Good for her. It's more fun to be around her than other types of feminists. A lot of people don't like the feminist agenda. People definitely accept parts of it. After all, in the last 50 years, we have seen a great change of women in the workforce. Pretty much everyone in our society accepts that now. That is one part of feminism that was great. Women can definitely work outside of the home. to get all worked up when someone happens to say mankind people are going to wonder it was interesting in college I hung around a lot of feminists and I happened to embrace a lot of their views because of it then in graduate school I found a lot of the people associated with the women's centers on the issue of abortion. Feminists will often say, you can't be a feminist and be anti-choice. Others say this is utter nonsense. There are some pro-life feminists. So they disqualify me from being a feminist. The way some of them act, that's probably a compliment. Because I don't want to be anally attentive like them. These feminists can't take any jokes. Everything is so serious. I hate to say that Rush Limbaugh is right, but sometimes when it comes to feminism, he is right. They are way too crazy. I see some interesting class differences. In my last job that I've had, I've worked with a lot of women who were from poor backgrounds. Some came from the ghetto. I noticed some big differences between them and the people I knew in college. People I knew in college were largely middle class white feminists. One day, my cubicle mate at the time who was Puerto Rican and grew up in the ghetto encouraged me to visit a strip club. I can just imagine a hissy fit if I mentioned going to a strip club around some of my white middle class feminists, former associates, that objectifies women, they would say. It's interesting that former cubicle mate of mine was the type of person she would not take shit from anyone. She was definitely a strong woman. But she didn't embrace the political correctness of the feminist establishment. She was laid back enough to appreciate strip clubs. claiming that strip clubs are super virtuous necessarily, but it's all about picking and choosing your battles. The world is not going to stop because of a few strip clubs. I wonder if what passes as feminism is just middle class white snobbery. 
political correctness stems from overly being polite. That's not empowerment. That's the opposite of empowerment. It's too bad. Middle class white feminists, a lot of people from different cultures are not going to embrace your middle class standards of etiquette. They're going to say words like mankind. They're going to go to strip clubs. Who the hell are you to tell people how to act? Some of the most inner-regenerate people around are school teachers. Liberals think school teachers are great, but they're so anal retentive. When I've come out against the school system, I have faced more flack from liberals than conservatives. Liberals have this insane view that our school system is so utterly virtuous. They think it's divinely sanctioned. They think teachers are saints. I worked in the school system and I saw it differently. About 85% of school teachers have power and control issues. Critics of the school system say all these rules and regulations for children make them full of anxiety and that makes it difficult for them to learn. It is mind-boggling how many rules and regulations teachers create. They do that because they want control over the classroom, over children. I worked as a paraprofessional under teachers and many of them had control over me. What I found was interesting. Those that had less power and control issues were generally less effective as teachers. Those with more power and control issues were great teachers. So it makes me wonder, what is this system rewarding? It seems to be advancing very dubious skills. Elementary schools are particularly bad. Kids have to be exactly in the same place at exactly the same time. There are a million different rules. It's amazing that kids even keep track of them sometimes. One of the worst rules I remember was so utterly ridiculous. This one teacher scolded children when they dared to put a marker in the pencil tray because pencil trays are for pencils. Who the fuck cares? I think it's virtually impossible to be a teacher and survive in our school system without being anal retentive. Certainly some teachers are less anal retentive than others. They may be anal retentive outside of the classroom. I knew people like that. But when it comes to their job, it brings out the anime ten of side in them. I came to this point where I didn't want to do what the school system had me doing. I liked interacting with the kids. The kids liked me in many cases. They saw me much differently than they did the other staff. In some ways this was challenging because they didn't see me as an authority figure. They saw me more as a big brother type. They loved playing with me, but I couldn't get them to do their homework. Part of the deal was they found me so fun, they wanted to have fun with me rather than do the schoolwork. And plus, deep down inside, I really didn't give a shit if they did their homework or not. It didn't matter to me. 
It doesn't matter. So I was going through the motions, especially toward the end. Even at one educational conference, it said, kids can see when there's a discrepancy between what you say and your body language. Although it's very subtle, my body language, to some extent or another, was saying, I didn't agree with this, but I was doing it anyways, while the other staff so they were part of the system. It's just like the kids who look at their rock stars. Some of their rock stars are older. Usually they are, at least, an adult age. Some rock stars are 30s, 40s in age. But even though these rock stars are the same age as their parents, kids look at them differently. Parents are authority. They, the rock stars, are cool. They love playing tag with me at recess. They found it really hard, once we had fun at recess, to then see me as an authority figure when we came into the classroom. Add that on to the fact, deep down inside, I didn't care about what I was doing. I was just going through the motions. You had a terrible problem. I eventually got to the point where I said I couldn't be a part of this power and control system, this anime kind of system. I didn't want to make a million rules for kids. I didn't want to enforce a million rules made by other people, made by stupid people. So I resigned. It was liberating to get rid of power and control issues. I was glad I was having the integrity to resign. I was glad I was able to take a stand, to not let my ego and its drive for power and control make me do what my heart said was wrong. So many other teachers are going to be in that same system for years. They're not going to grow, but I grew. I resented all the power and control issues. Not only did they have it over kids, but it definitely affected the way staff interacted with each other. Teachers who were controlling with their kids were often controlling with staff. to this conclusion even though I was against anal of behavior and I did make a good stand by divorcing myself from these anal retentive people I still had some huge anal retentive behaviors and inner conditions thus I decided I had to make some changes. It didn't happen right away. But I did have the awareness that I had power and control issues too. Some of the worst ones possible. Mine were more subtle. In my case, I had all these principles and morals. Now, principles and morals are definitely good, but if you have so many, it drives you nuts. When everything, every movement is a moral issue, that ultimately becomes a power and control issue. You become very innocent. You can't have any fun. You can't let your guard down because that may be immoral. That may be wrong. Although I was against fundamentalism, although I was against the school system, I was innocent in my own way. I was essentially a revolutionary fundamentalist. If you have a lot of principles in such an extreme way, it can really affect others. It can be very passive aggressive. I grew up in a home that was very chaotic. It was an alcoholic home and a fundamentalist home. The two often don't mix, but the two are very crazy and it makes it all the extra crazy when they come together. 
So as a way of having some consistency, I was to the extreme in having order. It was a way of fighting that. The deal is, if you have a million morals, the attention is always focused on you. You're always having the power. It may not be as blatant as other forms of power and control, but you are having power and control over everything. You have to control every little detail. So you do have power and control issues. If you go to somebody else's birthday party, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. Instead of just getting along with the others, you're drawing the attention on you and you are controlling it to some extent. You may not necessarily stop the activity, but by drawing the attention onto you, you are exercising power and control issues. I came to this awareness that there was something I really wanted in life. I was having the most difficult time getting it. My OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, was a problem. I long rationalized it wasn't that big of a deal, plus I was focused on other things. To me, life is this series of moves you make. So in one part of your life, you're improving in one way, and then after you have conquered one thing, you find more things to improve on, and you keep improving. This is against the fundamentalist way, because fundamentalists say you are perfect with your ideology, thus there's no need to change. But in reality, that prevents you from changing, because you're unwilling to see what's wrong. Although I had heard it before, it really clicked that my physical surroundings mirrored my mental state. I long had this trouble with clutter, and my apartment was full of clutter. Now granted, it wasn't the absolute worst. There were many people who were worse, but it was a significant problem, and it prevented me from getting what I wanted. In my case, it wasn't just physical clutter. It was extreme mental clutter in the form of something called scrupiosity, which is excessive moral scruples. Everything is a moral issue. I listened to this one audio book called The Devils in the Details. It's about this woman who was an Orthodox Jew and she took everything to the extreme. Every movement she made was a big moral issue. And that's the way I was. In my case, it wasn't religion. It was revolutionary views. I wanted to practice what I preached, and that is admirable, but I took it way too far. I was overly logical, and it is possible to be overly logical. On that audiobook, she said, it's missing the forest for the trees. And essentially, that's what I was doing. I did have this one bad situation. Sometimes they say when you hit rock bottom, it snaps you out of something. I didn't hit rock bottom, absolutely. But I saw what rock bottom could be in this situation it gave me an awareness of that. So it scared me enough. It didn't come right away after that. But that slowly started the wheels of introspection. The situation involved me missing the moral significance about one of the most important moral matters in our society. Yet I was overanalyzing things like deodorant and soap use. Those aren't very important matters, and this was very important. It showed me the lack of balance I had. I listened to an audio tape on clutter. I read a book on clutter. I started to remove my clutter. 
when I remove my physical clutter, like they say, it mirrors your mental clutter. And I realized in my mind, all these beliefs I had to get rid of. For example, one day when I was removing some of my physical clutter, it dawned on me that I should start swearing. It's really odd to say that starting to swear is a way of improving yourself, but that's essentially what it was. In the grand scheme, swearing is not very important. So I held too strongly to my anti-swearing ways. I had a million different rules and I have been in the process of unraveling them. Now I'm pretty much to the point where I'm done. But it was quite the process. It was a very good process. It involved a lot of looking at yourself. A lot of asking what is important. It's about picking and choosing your battles. Thomas Jefferson had a great quote. In matters of taste go with the flow and matters of principle stand like a rock. I long believed that, but I never quite got to the point where I attained that. I was far from that. The deal with me was, everything was a moral issue. So technically, I was complying with that. In matters of taste, go with the flow. There were some matters of taste that I went with the flow, but everything was a moral issue, so I went against the stream for everything. But in reality, everything is not a moral issue, or it probably is not best for it to be that way. So I decided what was important to me and what was not. I got rid of items in my physical surroundings that I didn't need. I got rid of mental beliefs. And I have a much better state of mind because of it. I feel much more relaxed. I don't feel like I'm fighting everything. I don't feel so rigid. I'm still disciplined. And I have embraced three main views. I've refined my three main views. But I'm not so rigid anymore. I'm not anal retentive. Just because you're not anal retentive, you don't have to go to the opposite extreme and let everything go. That's not the way either. It's good to have discipline. But know when it's wise to be firm and when you let go. It's not always easy. It takes great precision and balance. After I got through some of the big parts of the decluttering process, it felt like I cleaned out my soul. The clarity of mind is so beautiful. I've long been the type of person who knows what he wants in life, but I still had my energy diverted. Now my energy is focused. And I'm ready to go full steam ahead. I expect external rewards at some point, but even if I don't get them, I feel so much better about myself. I have such a better mindset that what I've done is entirely worth it. It's great to get rid of anal retentive thoughts and behaviors. It's good to be disciplined. It's not good to be anal retentive. It's good to have once and for all broken free of these terrible power and control issues. It was perhaps the biggest transformation of my life. It has opened me up to so many things, too many to even get into. I've written about these in my diary. It's amazing what has changed. My life has really improved. I did a lot of good things, before this but that's the nature of change and transformation you do a lot of good and then you want to do more good so you go deeper inside inner retentive is a terrible way to be I'm so glad I have overcame it it started with giving up the school system then it led to giving up OCD I encourage you to look into yourself and find the ways in which you are anal retentive. I don't want to be anal retentive. Hopefully you won't either. It's a ticket to craziness. The ticket to sanity is getting over anal retentive behavior. Good afternoon.